Hey, welcome. In this video, I will be working on this Toyo Occidentalis, which is called the Scarpment Toyo. This was originally a pom pom tree in front of my house, it was styled last year. And what I will do today is uh, prepare this tree to be shown, uh, to be exposed on a small exhibition that me and my friends at the Progressive Bonsai Collective will have on the 24th of October, Sunday, from uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Cots and Look Eleanor London Public Library. This is a free event, free parking, free entrance. The only thing necessary is to have your vaccination passport to be able to come in. We will be exposing a number of trees and the goal is to bring bonsai to where people uh, go, not to make people go directly, especially or on purpose to see a bonsai exhibition. So it's primarily directed at people that never experienced bonsai before. This tree is still clearly in development. It's, uh, it will be the second time I work on it. And a number of things happened with this tree. Um, the, what was the defining branch coming around here and here had been severely bent and cracked, but I thought being Tuya yeah, it would survive. However, it didn't. A branch here and a branch that came from here, here. This, this break here is quite um, a great addition to the a happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. So the scope of work today will be to make this dead wood here, which is new, um, match the existing one. So uh, I will uh, remove the remnants of the cambium that are still here, uh, as you can see. I will use my carving tool to create the striations here. And I may use the carving tool also to remove the bark in areas where, uh, for example here, where it's severely attached and it would be very hard to remove by hand because it's very dry already, dead wood. Let's get on with it. So I'm going to remove the bark in this section here now. I'm using the Fordham. Um, the Fordham TX is a great rotary tool because it has very strong torque with variable speed so you can have very slow speed with very strong force to continue rotating so i can even put it in my hand and nothing happens at this speed but this is enough to remove bark without leaving any tool marks this is something that smaller rotary tools like a Dremel cannot do or a Makita, if I'm, I never use the Makita, I don't know if it has variable speed but this is great. Now the bit that I'm using is one of those double cut uh, um, tungs I think it's tungsten bits and this is excellent again to remove bark The other thing that I should mention that I always forget to do and I will do it now before I regret any further is that I will cover the surface with a wet towel, paper towel, so that all of the dust and all, all, all of the debris from the carving doesn't get into the surface which has nice mass that I want to reuse. So I'll do that now. Okay so I put here the wet towel. The reason why putting a wet towel is that the sawdust will stick to it so once you remove it it's less likely to fall over the the surface and so now we can continue Thank you. 
Here in this section, I'm very carefully removing fibers to see where it's still alive and where it's dead. Because we have this branch here that is alive and we want to keep it that way. As you can see, it's all a dark cream color under the bark. These sections are dead. Here on this side, I hit the live section, but here it's dead for sure. Here it's dead. You may be laughing at me now, but I want to talk about security in dealing with these tools. I am right now wearing a mask which has a shield which is made of metal mesh. I'm not sure if it's the best, perhaps it would be better something that is um, transparent, but this is what I have. And I'm wearing gloves, which are ANSI level 5 for puncture and A4 for cut. And A4 for cut is moderate cut hazard. Um, and not only that, under this, I'm wearing a second pair which is level 5. Why am I wearing two pairs of gloves? Because if you're using a rotary tool and it comes into your hand, it can get all tangled together and actually uh, be a hazard in itself that you cannot take it, move it away as easily as, as necessary. I'm wearing two levels of gloves because of that and to give the extra um, security. Now, this is the most important advice about bonsai carving you will ever have is do not lose your attention or your focus or do not underestimate the danger of these tools. Why am I telling you this? The bonsai that you just saw me carving sent me to the hospital. I was using this bit called the flying saucer on a 1 over 8 inch shaft. It's a very delicate bit to create those ridges that you see in Deadwood. Um, and on a second of lack of attention if this was the if this was the branch i put my hand here on the top to hold it and i came with the tool under the branch to carve a ridge 
under the branch to carve a ridge and it hit a snag. Because the tool rotates in this direction, once it hit a snag, it slid over the surface of the branch and hit my hand. I'm showing you right now the cut at the hospital and it was so severe that the doctor called a resident to show my anatomy because it was really cool. I was lucky that I went a millimeter, I don't know exactly how close, but my tendon was visible and that's what the doctor showed the resident. Had my tendon been damaged, I would have required sur plastic surgery to reattach it. I did not lose any movement. This is almost healed. This was over a week ago or nearly a week ago and I will be doing well in a few days. This will be, I will remove the five stitches and I will be fine. Now, this is not enough. In addition to all of this, so I wasn't using a mask, I wasn't using gloves. And on top of that, I missed the I, I, I missed um, the safety protocols for a second due to lack of attention. It is much easier to have accidents with a flexible shaft because it's so easy to, to hold with one hand whereas a cumbersome large Makita is not easy to hold with one hand. At the same time the Makita is much faster and if you do have an accident by chance uh, the damage can be even worse than with the four of them. Um, so I wasn't using gloves, I wasn't using a mask and from now on I will be starting start to using a mask and two pairs of gloves but this is not enough. In addition to that what I am going to use is this pedal which is a dead man switch. So if I turn it on here and I'm using here the bit that I showed in the beginning that is not dangerous. This now the machine is on but it's not doing anything. Only when I press the pedal and let me change slightly the angle so the pedal can be seen. Actually, this way. Only when I press the pedal, like this, the machine starts to move. Now, this is the bit that doesn't do anything in my hand, as I showed you in the beginning. This is the the carbide double cut burr for the barking, and it's fairly safe. Still, you don't want to shove it in your hand but I, as I showed you earlier and as I show you now it doesn't do anything but this little bit here caused the damage that you saw now with the dead man switch I will be with the two hands on the machine and I don't even have to remove the hands to stop it from working um, and if I do have an accident and I move away it will stop immediately. I am putting the link in the description about for this dead man switch from uh, Amazon. Now I was extremely lucky and, and, and this was a wake up call for me because I was using this bit as I mentioned which is fairly small and although it did considerable damage and could have done much more if I were using this bit here which is uh, the sort of bonsai nibbler that you buy from Europe uh, from Harry Harrington or from Kaiser Kaizen bonsai this thing in my hand would have done much more damage 
I w could probably have even died, I guess. Uh, but definitely lost fingers and movement in the hand. But this is not the only beat that I use. The Foridom allows me to use a quarter uh, inch shaft with a, with a proper collet. And so I use often this bit here. And let me compare the sizes for you between the three. This is the one I had the accident with. Five stitches, nearly lost tendons. Luckily, I'm okay. Had I had the accident with this one here, the story would be very, very different. Had I had the accident with this one here, I would probably not be here telling you the story. Had I survived, I probably would have lost my right hand and definitely would have finished my bonsai career. So, you may laugh at the mask, double gloves, dead man switch, um, but from now on, I'm not taking the hands off the handpiece, two hands on the handpiece, proper stance with with a balanced leg behind and the non-balanced leg on the on the dead man switch and I'm giving these tools the extra respect that they deserve this uh, this is the end of discussing safety on my own having my own example what better than that to talk about it and let me talk to you a little bit about the, some of the beats that I have and the benefits of the four of them. So I have this sort of beat, which is the carbide beat uh, for the barking is excellent. It doesn't leave any tool marks that for example, the Rudy Ban from just to, to mention one that I used from Maurer Stenberger, but there are many similar tools. Leave marks. Um, this this will go down to the to the core wood without leaving any marks. Of course, if you press very hard, you will dig dig and and leave marks. Um, this. The flying saucer is a bit from um, from Germany. I will put a link in the description also, but you cannot buy it here in the in North America, only in Europe. Uh, it's excellent to create those ridge lines, very characteristic of of um, many uh, deadwood uh, deadwood in many species. This is to chew away wood and this is in much stronger manner the same and I have a few other bits different variations in shape of this different variations in shape of this um, for example let me show you this bit here I can get it out. This bit is also interesting to make, make little borer holes as well as ridges. It's uh, it's just an eighth of an inch uh, diameter and and cuts really well. Um, I have a number of cuts all really aggressive beats I don't use them much I still have to learn myself in what situations they are best used but I have those in different shapes in quarter inch um, shaft as well as eight of an inch shaft this yellow one here uh, if I can 
can take it out the box of the eight of an inch bits is overcrowded so here it is uh, I'm still learning which situations to use it and I think the best way to learn is to practice so I'm practicing with dead wood both fresh and dry um, and when I feel more confident to pass on my experiences I will do so another advantage of uh, an advantage of the Fordham is the speed control but at the same time it is a tool that has a very strong torque so whereas uh, a tool with small torque can rotate very fast if it hits an obstacle it will stop this one has a strong torque so it will not stop at an obstacle it's less likely to do so um, the other advantage of this is that there are different hand pieces for it and I have the H44T handpiece marked with a little bit of my blood now forever to remind me of what happened I also have this hand bit which is um, a, a, a chisel and I have all the different chisel heads so this is also very good for carving um, this is very very safe and if I if I can if I can show it to you Now it's running, but it doesn't do anything. Only the moment that I apply pressure inwards into the wood, then it starts carving. So this is very safe. Only if I really push, it will it will uh, activate. So I highly recommend the investment on a Fordham it's a tool for life the TX model is the strongest with the velocity control bench top and in addition I would strongly suggest that you use a dead man switch pedal uh, as a safety measure so I hope that uh, I stress sufficiently the the, the health and safety measures that at least as I understand them maybe I'm missing something so if you know anything else I should be doing for my own safety please uh, write down all the comments um, but about in terms of equipment as well as in terms of of pose not removing not not styling not um, not carving with a single hand at least not with the very dangerous bits with with the debarking bit it's not a problem i will still be wearing all the all the safety equipment but in that case i don't feel it's an issue to be doing it with a single hand in any case i prefer to do with both hands but sometimes there are places in a tree that it's hard to to you know maneuver like a ninja so so keeping both hands all the safety equipment and not being distracted by filming or by uh, kids or anything else it's a very safe tool but it's a very dangerous tool so give it the respect it needs
Hey, we are here Saturday morning, rainy day here in Montreal and I would like to show the tree as it stands now just to finalize this um, this video where the main message was safety with carving but also my carving um, approach and bits so let me show you the tree now um, this is the tree as it stands now obviously with the uh, with the injured hand I did not have the opportunity to unwire it and rewire it uh, the wire has to come off in many places where it's starting to bite for example here you can see it's severely biting so the wire will come off right after the exhibition but because of the injured hand I lost a week I didn't quite have the guts to apply pressure on my thumb and index finger on unwiring and rewiring so what I did instead was one to clean the dead wood the dead foliage sorry uh, two I moved foliage with existing wire just to fix some of the places um, where it was more evident that foliage was out of the place and here for example this piece of foliage would likely be here this I will still put a little piece of wire here to put it in place um, but I didn't have a wire that I could use in that position this is where the accident happened this is the final bit here is where it came out into my hand so what happened was that I put my hand here to support my other hand holding the tool and as the tool rotates this way it hit something here perhaps and it slid in this direction if I were to be working on the top of the tree it would have slid that way but on the bottom it slides this way and that's where my hand was so in the future um, I still need to finish carving this these are the sort of ridges that still look a little bit unnatural uh, unrefined but um, the idea is to follow the grain and the idea is to go around natural obstacles as as it would happen in real aged uh, deadwood but this will be continued in the future I'm not sure if before the exhibition or not I still have the entire top of that back branch that was produced now uh, as deadwood I did manage to attach a guy wire to bring this bag that was hanging out here to where I want it to be so that is it for now in this um, video that to took a different um, took a different direction than the one I hoped for so I hope uh, you heed my warning that I learned the hard way with um, safety in um, carving and if you watched thus far and if you like this content please subscribe please share this video uh, it's very important actually to share this video because of the message on safety in carving but if you enjoy this content and if you like and if you watch thus far please consider subscribing that helps a lot and uh, thank you for watching be kind and until the next one bye bye for now